Hi everyone, welcome back to my basic fire tutorial series. This video series was created for the master program in data science for healthcare and health informatics at uh, the Faculty of Medicine, uh, Rama Tiberi Hospital in Bangkok. And uh, now we are still in the module one, the overview and fire resources. We are now in the part three. Uh, my name is Rapanuwat. I'm a GP doctor. Currently, I'm working at Thai Health Information Center Development Center. And here is my background and here is how you can contact me. In the earlier session, uh, the first we talk about why we need fire. Then we go through the fire specification. For this session, we will look into important fire resources. Why we have to know about important fire resource is because when you want to exchange information in fire you have to model the information from the from your local system into fire resource and in order to do that you have to know uh, what resource uh, fire offer to you uh, which one is suitable for your use case so at least you should have some overview of uh, which resource is for what reason for what purpose and which result you should use for your situation. Here is fire module. Uh, it's the same as when you go to the home page. It's the first thing that you see in uh, the specification. So fire divide the specification into uh, 13 module. And in that 13 module, there are five levels. The higher level, such as this one, we will build upon the lower level. This one is the basic framework, the level one. Uh, level two use the basic framework to implement some technical requirement. And after you have the technical basis, you use that basis to build the clinical in entity in the level three, and you use those entities in the level four to form the clinical workflow and process and in the level five you use all of this to use in some advanced things like clinical reasoning for like a decision support for example so this is an overview of the 13 modules and i just want to uh, recap you that uh, in every resource, you can go here. In every resource, there will be a maturity level at the end. Uh, there are official definition here. What is each number mean? Uh, for me, I, I don't think you have to remember everything. Uh, you just understand that the higher number, the more mature it is. And N or normative is the most mature. Uh, zero is quite draft, so if you have to use a resource, if it's possible, uh, it's good to use a resource that is more mature because if it's already a normative resource, if Fire released the new version, let's say version 5, they will still support that resource and everything that you put in there except the TU element. But for other maturity, there will be a chance that uh, if they are very immature and they release for tile use and and people think it oh it doesn't work, maybe uh, it got removed in the next version. Okay, so let's begin with the level one of the five level here. In this level, uh, there are only one module that is foundation module. Foundation module is the infrastructure of fire, like uh, the definition of a resource, domain resource, how should we structure data, for example, bundle list composition. Uh, if you came here, this is foundation module, and this is some resource. There are a lot of resource in this module uh, because it's the, like I said, it's the infrastructure of fire. and. And in fire, I would say 
a lot of things is built upon the resource, the base resource here. Uh, when you see patient, this is a patient resource. Oh, where is patient? Patient, this is a patient resource actually is inherited from this domain resource uh, type and domain resource is inherited from the base resource and even for defining this resource it was defined with the structure definition the structure definition is also a resource this one so so the base resource is quite the basis of many things in fire when you create a profile and extension and operation and terminology uh, there will be a resource for that uh, my, my convention here is inside the bracket is the number of maturity uh, you can see that many resource in this module is already the normative one there are a lot of resources here but what i want to focus is this four resource the first one is resource uh, like i said is the basis of many things in fire but we don't use it directly it's more like a, an abstract class that uh, other resource inherit from from it we don't create the resource directly uh, when 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 you create resource you will understand what i mean uh, the second one is this one domain resource if almost everything in fire was created from resource i would say ma majority of resource in fire like here majority of them is inherited from domain resource there are only some I think this tree that is not inherited from domain resource but inherit from resource directly oh this one is also domain resource this one yes this one inherit from resource directly this one bundle inherit from the resource directly but all other resource you can randomly click it will inherit from domain resource clean domain resource right domain resource is the is like a first child of the resource and is like a father of most of resource in fire uh, what is the difference between resource and domain resource is that uh, resource defy the base uh, resource definition because every resource in fire inherit from this base resource so that all the resource will have this thing, ID metadata, but it doesn't mean that they will have to have, okay, because the currently is zero to one, but you will see a resource have this data when you're working with it. And then the domain resource is the first shy and the father of almost all resource. And it extends from resource is that it add the text narrative to the resource and you can have contained resource in the domain resource and you can add extension and modifier extension in the domain resource so extension start at the domain resource level for resource that is the inherit directly from from resource like a bundle because it's not inherit from domain resource this one so they, they will not have these text extension uh, things so if you want to add an extension in bundle you have to add at the element level okay be, before it go more complicated uh, what i want to, to say is that important thing in this module is resource because it's the base of everything and domain resource because most of fire resource inherits it from from it and then the next one is bundle because uh, when when we want to send information in fire we don't want to send the resource one by one 
we want to send this all together as, as a packet. So that is where the bundle comes. Uh, bundle has many type document message transaction bash uh, search set collection many type and they serve different purpose and you will uh, learn about it uh, in the future and the next one I want to mention is composition I uh, actually questionnaire list parameter all of this is important but well, when you want to create a file document, uh, you can do it by include the composition inside a bundle. And because we use document pretty often, so that's why it, it's important. So this is how the resource look like. Uh, I showed you uh, earlier, this one. And this one, domain resource. It inherit from resource and add this element and bundle and that is the level one the foundation module okay the next level is level two uh, this one is like a technical requirement uh, built upon the foundation so there are five modules in this uh, we will go through this one by one the first module in the level two is implementer support module. And uh, this module doesn't have uh, much resource. Yeah, most of them is the resource about testing fire. Uh, testing here is like testing that that implementation comply to fire spec or not, uh, which is a bit advanced topic and you don't have to worry about it now. Uh, this this module this module mainly uh, contain the library tools and other similar resources for implementer to use. Uh, if you go to download page, you can download uh, the definition uh, of each resource and file spec in XML JSON. Uh, you have the implementation tools, uh, reference implementation. Uh, many things that uh, implementer may need if they want to implement fire uh, this is a common use case and there there also a link to community uh, I think the main one is Silip this one and you can find many uh, tags I mean they call it streams and also have Thailand stream here uh, there are Dr. Bunchai in this and uh, there are also Mr. Graham Grief, uh, the one who created Fire. So if you want to talk with him, maybe you can talk here. Uh, so that is that is the implementer support module, mainly for implementer. Okay. Uh, this page is also important in this implementer support module the clinical safety there will be a checklist that uh, when you uh, have to implement fire you should go through this page uh, check this one by one to see if you are doing the thing that is safety for clinical use or not there are for example this one there are modifier element uh, if you remember from the last session is the element that can significantly change the meaning of the resource. So in this safety checklist, they said that I have reviewed the modifier element. Uh, if you have reviewed it, then, yeah, then you are doing the good things. For example, there is a, a lot of checklist here, but you should check it out when you're implementing fire. And the next module is security and privacy. Here, yeah. uh, because a uh, fire is a content standard, clinical content standard, not a security standard. So, fire doesn't mandate the technical implementation of security or privacy, but they provide a lot of guidance uh, here in this module 
you can come and redevelop it like the security principle this one and security label something like that and actually fire has many many component many resource that can support the security and privacy there are also a resource like consent provenance uh, audit even like this but they just don't mandate you to do anything that's it and the next module is conformance uh, this module conformance module is a module about definition of file resource and data type and how we can configure them to meet our particular context there are several important resources like this but i think the most important one is the first two that is structure definition and uh, capability statement this one structure definition is a resource that used for defining many structure in fire i think the important one is these three things is the definition of a resource a profile and an extension so if you came here to this page you will see the structure of the structure definition if you have many many elements but if you came to any resource like a patient resource you may wonder how of all of this came from actually all of this uh, what is the name of the element cardinality uh, everything was defined with the structure definition so let's say we copy it here and leave it as a JSON so this is the structure definition of a patient resource you see that there is a lot of thing here but if you go here you will see that this is an identifier element then active then name if you came here you will see that this is the actual definition in a computer readable format so this is patient identifier element the mean cardinality is zero the max is uh, many this one zero to many and there is a definition and there is constraint right constraint and you came back to the patient resource wow no constraint here then where does it come from so if you go to this type of the element you will see that is an element and every element has a constraint here all five elements must have a value or children so that constraint came to this one also it is it, it's a little bit advanced but what i want to show you is that everything that show in this page has the computer readable format in the background and that is structure definition for these resources so uh, a moment ago we see identifier the next one active right if you go here you see the next one is active next one is name so next one is name and name has mean zero max uh, many is modifier or not no not is summary two then if we came here you see that it's summary right so so this is how how they define the structure of a resource in fire that is structure definition structure definition is not just for defining a resource if you want to create a profile it's a structure definition as well and also as the extension is also a structure definition so this one is the definition of a resource that I showed you earlier and this one let's see some extension like a bird place extension here okay you will see that for an extension is also a 
structure definition if you go to like us core and you go to the any resource let's say patient profile uh, this one is a profile that uh, constrain on the core file resource right this one actually it is also the structure definition if you go here you will see that json this is the uh, definition of this us core profile us core patient if you uh, back to the content and okay let's say identifier here here there is a definition of that element here and you will see that min is one mac is many so this is mean too many uh, one too many so that is a uh, structure definition uh, actually when you are working with fire maybe you have to create some structure definition but i would say most of the time you don't do it by by hand manually that there, there will be a tool that you can use to automate this process like forge uh, from simplifier uh, that I will show you in later session of this uh, tutorial series. The next one I want to mention is this uh, element definition uh, because structure definition is for the structure of resource extension profile things but element definition is for each element inside that uh, resource so it will have many things, uh, many things for defining that element as well. But if you remember the structure definition here, there is a name like this, this, this mean Mac base type condition constraint must support. All of this actually it came from this one. Slice name, right? Mean Mac type and many things so so basically structure definition is like a container and inside that there is a lot of element inside the structure definition and each element was defined with the element definition here so this is how it works internally of fire but you don't want to uh, concern about it that much uh, because like i said in structure definition most of the time we deal with it with some sort of tool but it's good to know the inside structure of it and the next one that we might have to deal with is the capability statement this is for a server to describe what it can do or to define a specification for other people who develop a solution have to follow uh, this one let's say that when you want to deal with fire server you you have the first thing that you want to know is uh, what functionality of the server it has, right? Uh, which HTTP verb that they support, which resource that they support. Because if you don't know about it, you are not sure that the uh, solution that you are making will work correctly. Uh, and the next one is operation definition. Uh, search parameter and implementation guide operation definition is about operation operation is like a command you put to the server and uh, that i i haven't uh, talked about it yet if you want if you have to deal with operation it was defined with that operation definition and search parameter uh, if you remember that in every pay, uh, in every resource at the end, there is search parameter here. This was defined with this resource. And the last one, implementation guide. Uh, if you remember in the last session, it's a pack of uh, related profile and artifact that for a particular context that we have to, that we want to include in the single packet. Uh, it created by this resource. So that is conformance, 
Oh, two. Here. Yeah, element definition is inside structure definition. Capital statement is a resource that a server or software used to describe how they support five functionality. Which resource does it support? For each resource, what REST API the user can use and search parameter and operation can the user use fire document or fire messaging? All, all of this was described in the capability statement resource. The next module is terminology. Terminology is a module for dealing with coded data, uh, including the one that we define locally or the one that, that came with fire or a standard terminology like SNOMED CT. There are several resources in this module, but I would say that the relationship between uh, resource in this group can can be described at in this picture. The important one is the core system, like the core system of Snowman CT or the core system of administrative gender. The core system will have a lot of code inside of that, like uh, Snowman CT may have 300,000 concepts inside it. The value set resource will select some code from the core system to create a value set. It can select from multiple core system as well. Uh, let's say that maybe uh, core system have 300,000 concept value, value set, select only 100 concept to create the value set. And in the structure definition, uh, whether it is a file core or a profile, there will be a, an element definition that by to the value set. Uh, like I show you in previous session, the patient, like administrative gender of the gender element, uh, this element by to this value set, like this. This value set select the code from a code system or code defined here. You can click here and see that this is a code system. Value set select code from code system and you buy the value set to the element or maybe it's not you, it's fire by to the uh, element. But when you reference in the element, that element must refer to the core system. Oh, it, it doesn't important. Uh, what I want to say is that core system is a list of code, value set selected from one or more core system, and element definition by to that value set. And there is also naming system and concept map. Um, I think we can skip this one. A uh, concept map is when you want to map between different code system, like uh, what is the ICD-10 code for this SNOMED CT concept, for example. Here you can see that code system A may have many terms, code system B have many terms, where you said select the some term from both system or just one system or just this system. And here is that I show you earlier. Some element may buy to some value set. And the last module of this level is exchange. Exchange is the module that dealing with exchanging mechanism in fire. Uh, the main thing is REST API. But there are other things as well, like uh, searching and operation. And like I said, uh, you don't have to use REST, you can use GraphQL uh, if you want. And this is GraphQL, this is uh, operation. This is search, how to search in fire. This is quite a document that have many details because you can search in many ways in fire. 
And it's also described about fire messaging and fire documents and fire database. Uh, we don't have to go in detail here. I just want to let you know that the exchange module is the one that dealing with all exchanging stuff things. Okay, and the next level is entity. And in this level, we only have one module that is administration, but it's a module that there is a lot of resource inside here, which we can categorize it into five groups. Let's go in detail for each group. And the first group of resources in this uh, module is patient register. It's the resource that dealing with the patient and related person. Uh, the first one is patient. Uh, this resource is for storing information about demographics and in administrative information of a subject of care. A patient doesn't need to be a normal patient. They can be a normal patient, but they can be other people as well. Uh, like a resident in a nursing home or even an animal is also using patient resource to represent them. So patient is a subject of care. Related person, uh, this is a person involved in the care of a patient but doesn't have the official uh, responsibility to take care of the patient. So they are not like a, a nurse or a doctor because those person have the like an official responsibility to do that. The late person is like my relative that uh, take care of me when I got sick. A person is a person independent from a specific health related concept. Maybe uh, some people in my community that is doesn't relate to my health, but uh, because I want to collect his information for some reason, so I use this resource. Group is a collection of entities, uh, such as a group of patients in a counseling group. And the next one is clinical categorization. The main resource, oh, I forget to say that, if it's a resource that I use frequently, I will uh, put an asterisk here. In this group, the most important one is encounter. Uh, encounter is an interaction between a patient and healthcare providers to provide healthcare service or assess the health status of a patient. This means it doesn't have to be a treatment. Uh, it can be assess an assessment and encounter is pretty large scope. It includes the uh, OPT visit, IPD stay, ER visit, or virtual visit. There are a lot of encounter type in the scope. Uh, if you came here to see this value set, you will see that this is a value set for a code of the encounter. There is like a AMB, this is the OPD visit, emergency home health care, inpatient, uh, observation, and even short stay or virtual. Virtual is it like a telemedicine. So that is encounter. Uh, the next one is episode of care. This is a container of encounter. For example, uh, diabetes, uh, that the patient have to visit the doctor every specific period of time. All of that encounter is can be grouped into episode of care. Account is a financial tool for tracking of the patient uh, financial things. Flag, a uh, flag flag is like a special tag that we can put into a subject. Uh, a subject can be uh, a doctor, a patient, or many other uh, subject. Uh, let's say that if the subject is the patient. Maybe we can put a flag like a risk, like a fall risk, or a special needs like a like a difficult to hearing, or is a risk to provider like a, the patient have a dog in house, for example. So it's like a general purpose 
tag that we can put to a subject. And the next group is the with provider directory. Important one in this group is the first three uh, organization is uh, representing a company, uh, institution, department. So if we want to represent the hospital or clinic, we use the organization. Uh, organization is more abstract than the location because people in the same organization can be in many locations, right? But location is a physical place uh, such as a building or an inside a, an ambulance or inside a specific thing like inside a refrigerator, etc. Next is practitioner. This is the demographic information of a practitioner. It's pretty uh, similar to patient demographic. If you see inside it, there is a name identifier, contact name identifier contact but there is some different and the practitioner will include the qualification but patient have uh, some other things so but mainly is both of them are demographic information and the next one is practitioner role this one describe a role of a practitioner practitioner like a clinical specialty or available time etc Healthcare service is healthcare service that uh, has been provided in that location. Let's say that we provide a pharmacy service, a neuropsychology service. That is healthcare service. There's a lot of detail. And endpoint, endpoint is like a technical endpoint for electronic service. I, I don't I don't have much experience with this resource. The next one in the group is scheduling and appointment. Uh, if you see inside, actually this resource belong to the workflow module, but uh, it's pretty related to clinical entity. So they put it here as well. The important one is appointment. It's a booking of healthcare event. It's a request resource. And appointment response is a reply to that request. And schedule is a container of slot. Slot is a slot of time that available for booking. So this is the main resource about scheduling and booking and appointment. For me, I frequently use appointment the most when representing uh, appointment and scheduling concepts. And the last one in this module is device and substance. Resources in this group are not used quite often in Thailand. And some of them like a device definition, device metric is a pretty and early stage. So don't need to concern about it that much. I think maybe the, the most important one is device. Uh, it's a, a manufacturer item used in the provision of healthcare uh, without being substantially changed to the activity. Uh, it can be medical or non-medical device, but most of the time we use it for like a uh, medical equipment, like a uh, cane that we give to a patient and or some medical device like uh, a pacemaker or something like that. Uh, the Y definition, I never used it, but the spec said that it's a characteristic uh, status and capabilities of uh, that device. And device metric, I never use it also. It's a measurement calculation of that device. Substance is a homogeneous material with a definite compositional, such as a chemical, or food, a biological substance, for example, uh, the coronavirus is using substance to represent it. Actually, most of the time, we refer to the terminology for representing mm -hmm. the information, but there may be some case that the terminology is not enough and we want to put more information. That is when the substance resource comes. Actually, there are a few resources in FIRE that quite similar to this that uh, we mainly use terminology to represent the concept 
but there is also a resource that can use uh, in addition to add more information to the terminology. Uh, I think the Y is also considered this group and this one, medication. When we send the medication information, uh, most of the time we use the terminology like the TMT, uh, medicine terminology, but in case uh, we want to put more information uh, in addition to that, to the terminology, we use a resource like it to put more information in it. So, and that is the level three, the administration module. The next level, uh, after we have the entity in healthcare in the last uh, level, we can combine it into a healthcare process in this level. And this level has five modules, and each module has a lot of resources inside. And we will go through each one by one. The first module in this level is clinical module. Uh, this is a module about called clinical information. And there is quite a lot of resource in this module. The one that I think important is these three. Uh, the first one is allergy intolerance. Uh, this one is for recording the information about uh, undesirable or harmful physiological response uh, associated with exposure to a substance. Uh, this, this is mainly for recording the allergy, drug allergy, food allergy, or allergy to other things. The second one is condition or problem. This is for recording clinical condition, problem, diagnosis, issue, or clinical concept that has risen to a level of concern of the of the one who recording that information. Uh, for example, in this situation, uh, a clinician may concern about the patient condition like uh, anorexia, but the patient is not concerned about that at all. So it can be used for recording an issue or a concern of the clinician, uh, but mainly I use it for recording diagnosis and problem. And the third one is procedure. Uh, procedure is an action that performed that was performed to the patients. Uh, it can be operation, uh, surgery, or less invasive thing like uh, long-term service uh, counseling. The next one is a uh, family member history. Uh, this is for significant health condition for a person related to the patient. Uh, maybe my mom has uh, diabetes, then I use this resource for recording it. Next one is care plan. I saw people in other countries use this resource a lot, but here we, we, we don't use it that much because even in the EHR, we don't store this information so that it cannot pull to the fire resources. But it's a resource to record the intention of how one or more practitioners intend to de deliver care for a patient, a group, or a community for a period of time, possibly limited to a care for a specific condition or a set of condition, like a, they record a problem with the condition resource and they decide a care plan for that problem. And goal is to describe the objective for a patient group organization. Uh, most of the time it used with a plan. So a uh, patient have condition. So we have a plan and for the plan we have a goal. See so yes, how this uh, relate to each other. And another one is care team. Care team is all the people and organization it, who participate in the care of a patient. It may come from a patient side, like uh, our relative, or 
came from the organization side, like a practitioner or practitioner from another organization. And the other one is quite uh, the early stage resource. Uh, clinical impression is the A in the SOAP. Uh, is to document the outcome of the clinical assessment process. It's not yet a condition, but it's an impression. At worst, even, it's said that it unintended injury resulted from a medical care or research. Uh, I think it's different to allergy. It's more like a, something that uh, caused by practitioner's side. Detected issue, this one I'm not sure as well, is a clinical issue with or between clinical actions like drug-drug interaction, ineffective treatment frequency. Uh, this one is also just uh, level one maturity. Risk assessment uh, to record the likely outcome for a patient like a prognosis of a disease. The next module is diagnostic. This module is uh, concerning about uh, clinical diagnostic, mainly laboratory imaging and genomic. Uh, the most important one in this group is this three resource. Observation uh, is used a lot in fire. It's a resource for measurement and simple assertion made about a patient. It can be used for physical examination, like oh, this patient has abdominal tenderness, or a measurement like a vital sign, a laboratory test like glucose test, or some imaging like bone density, or some assessment like APGAR score, a Glasgow Coma score, or a social history like smoking history. So it's something that practitioner can observe from a patient. That is a, a observation. A imaging study is the content produced in a DICOM imaging study. Diagnostic report. This result is the finding and interpretation of a diagnostic test, uh, including the clinical context and some mix of atomic result. For example, uh, let's say the CBC test, uh, we use the diagnostic report as the container and uh, we use observation for each individual test like hemoglobin, hematocrit, white cell, something like that. Each of that is observation, but the one that group everything is diagnostic report. And you can see here an example and let's see lipid profile like this here you can see that it's a diagnostic report and inside it will reference to each observation each value this report is for the lip lipid profile but uh, the result the individual test inside it is observation. It can be show as in this picture. Observation can be alone or it can be inside uh, other resource. Uh, observation can have a component like, uh, let's say blood pressure uh, is the one observation, but it has two components, the systolic blood pressure and diastolic blood pressure so that is uh, an observation and observation can be alone like uh, blood pressure things like physical as examination things or it can be inside a diagnostic report like in this in this lipid profile we have the diagnostic report resource as a container and inside that we have a result we have a result element that reference one to, uh, zero to many to our observation. So each observation here is was referring uh, is referring inside the result 
observation 1, 2, 3, 2, n. And diagnostic report is used for uh, reporting of imaging study as well, but instead of observation, we use the imaging study element here instead. And inside the imaging study, we can have multiple series, and we also can refer to the raw media of the uh, imaging. So that is the most important three of the this module. The next one is media resource. This is for storing the photo, video, or other media acquiring used in healthcare. The next one is molecular sequence. This is the raw data about biological sequence. I never work with it either. Next one is specimen. A uh, specimen is a sample to is a <laughs> specimen uh, is pretty straightforward. It's a specimen that we collect for uh, testing or for analysis. Body structure is a uh, record detail about an anatomical structure. Uh, this one is quite similar to to substance. Uh, most of the time we use uh, terminology for for storing the information. But in case terminology doesn't have enough detail, then we can use this resource to store more information. The next module is medications. This one is dealing with medication and immunization information. The important one is this three, and this three also, and the immunization. Uh, medication request is a resource for an order. An order for supply of the medication and instruction for administration. So medication order use medication request. Then after the doctor prescribe the medication, then the pharmacy use medication dispense to provide the supply of a medication. Uh, that is with the intention that is subsequently consumed by a patient. Then the nurse administrate the medication into the patient, or maybe the patient take the medication by themselves. This is when the patient uh, consume a medicine or someone administer to them. This tree is a resource in a workflow things, but medication statement, this one is the resource that indicate that a patient may be taking a medicine, a medication now or in the past or will be taking in the future. The source of the information can be patient, uh, significant others such as relative or a clinicians. So when we represent the medication order, we use this one medication request, but when we Let's say that we want to have a patient summary that like the international patient summary, they also choose they also choose to use medication statement to represent the current medication that uh, that the patient is taking. Uh, medication resource. This one is like I said earlier, uh, this one this one is also similar to this one. Mainly we use uh, terminology to store the information, but in case terminology is not enough, we can have more information here. Medication knowledge, this one is quite a pretty early stage and I haven't used it. It's uh, information about medication like uh, interaction, contradic contradiction, uh, cause, regulatory status, uh, administration guideline. The next is immunization. Uh, immunization resource is the record of current and historical administration of vaccine to a patient, both humans and animals. So if we want to record vaccination, we use immunization. Immunization recommendation and evaluation is one. Uh, these two uh, early stage. Recommendation is used for uh, this one is like uh, what the immunization that that patient should take in the future. 
For example, rabies vaccine that the patient should have have five doses in the specific time in the future. And evaluation, immunization evaluation is is an evaluation of a vaccine administration event. Again, a, a set of public recommendation. Let's say that the public recommend uh, this dose, this dose, and what happened actually compared to that recommendation. Okay, and the next module is workflow. Workflow is here. Uh, this module focuses on coordination activity within and across system, uh, such as when a person asks another person to do something, and that there are resources that can be used to tracking between activity in this module. Uh, most resources in this group are quite and for me is an advanced topic and I I don't have much experience with them. But there are some resources that are quite familiar. Uh, for example, service request. This is a resource for recording a request for something. Someone asking someone to do something is quite a general purpose request that we don't have more specific request. Uh, what I mean is that in medication, we have we have this. We have medication request, right? Uh, we have nutrition order in this module as well. We have vision prescription, but for uh, an activity that doesn't have the specific resource for request it. Uh, we can use service request, uh, whether it is a request for a diagnostic test or a request for a treatment, request for operation, request for referral, we can use service request. This is quite a resort that being used quite often. A nutrition order, this one is straightforward. It's a request for a diet or feeding or nutritional supplement. Vision prescription, this one is for a class request or a contact lens order. A device request is a request for a medical device. Supply request this is for an inventory management. It's like a request for more medication to stock in the ward or something like that. Next module is financial, the last one of this level. Uh, this module dealing with financial information. Uh, there are many resources in this module as well. And for me, it's pretty complicated module. And uh, there are a lot of things that related to the Western healthcare context. So I, I wouldn't say that I understand this module that much. And in current implementation in Thailand, most of the time we use the clinical resources and we haven't deal with the financial resource yet so I don't have much experience in this module as well but there are some resources that I have worked with in the past some of them are here like this one claim is a list of professional service and product which have been provided or to be provided to a patient uh, for sending is to an insurer for reimbursement Claim is quite an important resource in this financial uh, module. Next one is claim response. This is for respond to the claim. Account is a financial tracking for, for the patient. Coverage, this one is for high level identifiers and descriptor of a insurance plan. Basically, it's like a insurance card information that or what is covered for this patient. And explanation of benefit. This combine information from many resources, claim, claim, response, uh, remove the proprietary information and use in patient reporting or to transfer it to the patient re record system or to support the exchange with the regulator or analytics organizations. So. That is the end of the level four. And now we are in the last level, the level five. Only have one module as well. That is clinical reasoning.
This model uh, enabled the represent enabled the representation, distribution, and evaluation of clinical knowledge artifact. This one is quite an advanced topic in fire, and I would say I don't have much experience with it. Uh, mainly, it's for using in clinical decision support rules or quality measure, public health indicator, or the set clinical protocol, something like that. Uh, you can have a look if you are interested. Uh, there are definition resourcing like activity definition, plan definition, uh, library on, and there are yeah other detail that is quite yeah advanced. So now we have go through all of this uh, thirteen module. Uh, I hope you get some idea about which resource you should use for your situation, your exchanging context. And I will recap it here that frequently used fire resource for me, that it, if I want to represent patient demographic, I use patient and I use the related person for patient's relative. If it's a doctor and nurse information, I use the practitioner or practitioner role depend on what information they need. A hospital, uh, we use organization for administration information, but for physical location, we can use location. Visit information, IPD, OPD, telehealth, use encounter, uh, and can be grouped by episode of care. Medication and food allergy, use allergy intolerance, some history or physical examination, use observation. Procedure, uh, operation, we use procedure. Problem list, diagnosis, use condition resource. Ordering, referral, mainly use service request, except when we have more specific resource like medication request for medicine or nutrition order for food. Medication information, we use medication request for the order, medication dispense for dispensing, administration for administration. Medication statement for like a list of the medication that the patient is taking. Lab result, we use diagnostic report for reporting and observation for each result. Imaging study, we use diagnostic report for reporting and imaging study for each result. Vaccination information, we use immunization. Appointment, uh, straightforward appointment. Financial information, mainly account coverage claim, claim response result. All information that is in coded data, uh, at least we have to use code system and value set. And for grouping information for exchange, uh, we use bundle. Most of the time we use transaction or batch. And when we creating the file document, we use document bundle. And that is for uh, overview of the important file resource. Uh, if you have any question or you have any suggestion, feel free to uh, post in this video or we can talk about it in this Friday. Thank you very much for attending. Uh, see you again in the next session. Bye-bye.